Hmm. What is this new skincare hack? Olive oil? Thanks, JLo, for the nice recommendation there. All jokes aside, this video is all about JLo's claims that olive oil was her beauty secret all this time. No plastic surgery, no Botox, just plain old olive oil or EVOO, what have you. This is a new one for me. And when I was in medical school and residency, I remember olive oil being relevant, especially for my dermatology board exam. It is used to grow a yeast called malassezia, and we'll talk about that soon. So, you know, if you haven't heard about that, the news about that, she's coming out with a new skincare line. Congratulations to you, by the way, uh, JLo. I'm very happy for you, and I know you don't like hearing people say you look great for your age, but you do look fabulous. Your skin looks glowing. Uh, with or without makeup. Uh, I know you, ma you posted a uh, video the other day of you uh, without makeup and whatever you're doing, it's working. And this video is not to attack JLo in any way. It's all jokes uh, for sure. I wanted to just talk about olive oil on the skin. It works for JLo, but it does not mean it works for everyone. Olive oil is a nice cooking ingredient. It has a lot of antioxidant benefits, really good health benefits uh, that I'll list right here. But for the skin, I would be careful when using it for, especially if you have oily skin, acne prone skin, because olive oil has the, uh, in, the nice nutrients to feed bacteria. And as you know, acne is related to the infundibular opening, the pore opening of a hair follicle getting clogged with debris and oils that will, the sebum that will feed bacteria P. acnes was the, the name uh, that I, I was in res I grew up with calling it Propionobacterium acnes. Has another name now, but this bacteria is important in the pathophysiology of acne. It feeds on that sebum, all of that debris causes inflammation. So you need this perfect storm recipe to cause an inflammatory pustule or inflammatory red bump or papule on your face and that's the acne bumps we're seeing. So you're gonna feed that bacteria further with olive oil, go right ahead, but I do not recommend this because it can worsen acne for sure. And I have not seen this yet, but I just want in clinic that people are rubbing olive oil on their skin and causing really bad flares. But you know, I've seen definitely worse things people have smeared on their faces, but olive oil, I just don't want you guys uh, coming in uh, with worsening acne because you were using olive oil, hearing that from JLo and um, that's gone all over the news last week. The other thing is I do not recommend olive oil on the scalp. I had a patient the other day who was talking about putting olive oil on the scalp and dealing with dry, itchy scalp. Uh, you would think an oil, uh, an oil would be moisturizing. You know, for babies with cradle cap, you can use mineral oil, those types of things will be fine to help break up that thick scale on the scalp. But for say an adult with seborrheic dermatitis, we've talked about dry itchy scalp, sebal psoriasis or psoriasis of the scalp. Those things you don't wanna apply olive oil to the scalp because it will also feed malassezia. Malassezia is that yeast that is part of the pathophysiology of causing a dry itchy scalp. Seborrheic dermatitis is um, the formal name of that. It, in mild forms, is dandruff, really severe forms. It causes really red, inflamed, thick plaques in your scalp, which is covered with like just cement, hard scale over those plaques. If you feed that yeast further, and there's no way to just eradicate it, it lives on our skin as a commensal microbe, meaning it's on our skin from when we we're babies till now. There's no way to drop a bomb on it to eradicate it. It's just living there. So if you want to feed it olive oil, go right ahead, but I don't recommend it. Okay. So if you were trying to grow malassezia in the laboratory setting, this is part of the board exam. If you're a dermatology resident, you might get tested on this small minutia. How do you grow malassezia in the laboratory setting? olive oil. It doesn't really care for the other media that you traditionally grow. Here, this is a snapshot of what we see under the microscope when we are looking at malassezia for, for spaghetti and meatballs uh, sign. Uh, if you see that, that's highly likely this yeast we're dealing with um, on the scalp or uh, on your face. So please don't feed the yeast olive oil. Similar to, like I say, topical steroids. 
do not put that on a ringworm rash. I know a lot of you can't tell what, a, what ringworm looks like at times. It's tricky, it can overlap with psoriasis, eczema. Putting a, a steroid on a rash without the help of your dermatologist, not advised, but if you were to put it on and you see your rash explode with a steroid, that is probably, you're gonna worry about, maybe you're putting it on a fungus, a fungal rash. So definitely stop, call your dermatologist, you know, stop the steroid and have him, he or she, uh, look at the rash uh, unadulterated without putting lots of steroids on it, but give them the history you did put it on, because that is helpful, that if you put a steroid on a rash and got worse, our differential changes or could be changed. And so uh, I always say steroids, I tell my patients, you're adding fertilizer to the fungus by adding a steroid. The same goes for molluscum. That's the pox virus that causes molluscum contagiosum. Those really pearly uh, papules that are have this little umbilicated center, those are highly contagious, as you can see from the name, molluscum contagiosum. You see it in a lot of times in pediatric patients. I do see it in adults, but I do see parents making the mistake of putting steroids on a viral process like molluscum, and it spreads like wildfire. So always be careful what you apply on your skin because you can always make a medical condition worse. And the, uh, in terms of molluscum, you see a lot of times in kids with eczema because they already have a compromised skin barrier. The virus is gonna get in, you scratch it, it spreads like crazy. Parents think it's eczema and they put steroids on it and then it goes all over the body and not just in your skin folds where eczema commonly occurs in kids. Okay guys, so this is another quick Dr. Sugai Explains. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for the support. I hope you all have a nice holiday season. Use your EVOO for your cooking, but not so much for your face, unless you have good success with it and you've had no complications like JLo. Just everyone's different, okay? So even the products I recommend is not for everyone too. This is not medical advice, it's just education. Let's keep having fun. Happy holidays, take care, peace.